To question number five. Again, a nulliparous 29-year-old lady presents with infertility. On examination, uterus is felt to be normal size, but it is retroverted and fixed. Also, there is tenderness in the posterior vaginal fornix. So, I have told you this earlier. I am sure uh, I have to, uh, you know, drawn this diagram uh, somewhere in the app to show you that the cervix is downwards and forwards. In the vagina, it is like this. So, when the cervix is downwards and forwards like this and when intercourse happens, then the sperms are released in the posterior vaginal fornix and when the sperms are released here, they will find their way into the cervix and into the uterus and then into the fallopian tubes which will be over the ovaries where the eggs would be coming. So, the sperms will come here. So, in the ampulla, the fertilization takes place. So, the antiverted uterus and a downwards and forwards. See, you look at my hand here. I'll try to uh, show the, you know, uterus and cervix assembly with my hand, what I'm showing here. So, this is the posterior vaginal wall. The cervix is like this. So, when the sperms are released here, let's say I'm trying to show with this pen, the sperms are released in the posterior vaginal fornix. Cervix is downwards and forwards. It's a very good anatomy because the cervix can pick up the sperms and rather the sperms can swim through the cervical mucus and get into the cervix easily because of this anatomy. Now what happens? It is saying that the uterus is normal size but it is retroverted and fixed. So what happens in some additions and the posterior wall of the uterus, there might be some additions and the uterus may get retroverted and fixed. Fixed to let's say the sacrum or to the pouch of Douglas. So when the uterus is retroverted, see you can make out so well that the mouth of the cervix is upwards and forwards. It should be downwards and forwards. If it is upwards and forwards, you can imagine very well that the sperms when they release in the posterior fornix, now the cervix is upwards and forwards, the cervix is going to miss the vaginal pool of semen. It is going to miss the sperms. So that's why it can contribute to infertility. A fixed retroversion, let's say I can draw that also and show you a fixed retroversion, the cervix will become somewhat like that. So, when the cervix goes up because of let's say this is the sacrum here and the uterus got stuck here with additions, the sacrum has got the addition of the uterus and the cervix has gone like this. So, when it is upwards and forwards, this vaginal pool of semen will be missed. So, fixed retroversion is a cause for infertility and additions is mostly that reason. So, which one of this you think is known to cause aerations? Straight away, no doubt, endometriosis is your answer. Adenomyces, the uterus will be bulky, bigger. Adenomyces seen in multiparous women, not in nulliparous women. That is one thing. It is seen in multiparous women and size of the uterus will be uniformly enlarged. Uniformly enlarged. And yes, I have told you that before. Remember, it is never more than 14 centimeters in size. That's what is uh, some information about the adenomyosis. Fibroid uterus, the uterus will be irregular in size. It can be any size. It can be as big as possible. Okay, so there is no limit to the size of a fibroid. Adenomyosis, 12 to 14 centimeters maximum. Ovarian malignancy, you will not get these findings. You know, um, uh, uterus, they are feeling it is fixed. So, ovarian malignancies generally don't bother the uterus till they become very huge in size. So, question number five, the answer is B. Now, in endometriosis, the question which some of you gave me on the Facebook was drug of choice for endometriosis. Now, please guys, I, I don't know whether there was a question like this or you guys uh, recalled only part of the question because they can ask you some part of endometriosis and ask you the drug of choice for that. If they ask you drug of choice for endometriosis, then that question does not exist. And some of you may not agree with me, but please, endometriosis is a big syndrome. And endometriosis requires treatment of pain, treatment of adhesions, reduction of the rate of progression of disease, then treatment of uh, infertility, and then suppression of the endometriotic implants. So there's so many aspects to the endometriosis management that you cannot just say that drug of choice for endometriosis is what one drug. That kind of question cannot come. So if it was there in the exam, I'm sorry. That was a wrong question to be asked, but I'm sure it was not. So the uh, question was obviously something to do with the management and there was also one question which shows fixed retroversion. So I've given you that answer. I'm giving you some part of the management which is more important rather than remembering the drug of choice. So the progestins may exert an, an 
anti endometriotic effect by causing initial decidualization of endometrial tissues followed by atrophy. I have taught you in the app that giving high dose progesterone ultimately causes atrophy of the endometrium and also of the endometriotic tissues. So endometrium in the uterus will get atrophic, endometriotic tissues outside the uterus like the cyst, they will also slowly become smaller and they will shrink in size. So it helps, progesterones are very good. So progesterones can be considered as the first choice. I mean, if you want to know the drug of choice, I don't know. Maybe the first choice drug if you want, I've given you that information. The first choice for the treatment of endometriosis because they are effective as danazole or GnRH and Lux. Now, some of you are saying the drug of choice is danazole. Please, they are as effective, progesterones are as effective as danazole. Excellent drug, danazole, but hirsutism side effects and GnRH osteoporosis side effect. And danazole, if I am giving, I am going to actually cause so much of atrophy that it takes longer to recover as compared to progestins. So, yes, they have a Progesterones have a low cost and possibly a lower incidence of side effects than their other agents. All right. So that's why progesterones are better. Progestins means derivative of progesterones. Natural hormone is progesterone. Progestins are synthetic derivatives. Now, there is no evidence that any single agent or particular dose is preferable to other. Got that? This is only because you guys keep asking me what is that one drug of choice. Nothing like that exists and this is the line and I am quoting Novak's Gynecology, the Bible for uh, reproductive endocrinology and oncology in gynecology.